Okay, welcome back to the channel. So here the water quality is still okay, but as you'll see, this is the cleanest it's gonna be throughout this entire trip. On the drop. And here, let me just remind everyone that private lessons for this season are in full swing. So send me an email or DM me on Instagram if you want details on that. Also, if you haven't already, definitely check out my hook set mechanics video. That one's pretty important for you to watch. So when the water clarity is suboptimal, and remember, water clarity is all relative. So fish that live in two foot of visibility, they're fine living and hunting in that environment. However, once that drops to a foot, once that drops to six to eight inches, then you're going to have to adjust your jigging technique just a little bit. And one thing you can do is make repeated casts to the same location and I will cover water a little bit slower than I normally do because it takes a little bit of time for these fish to actually locate your jig. They can smell the gulp but they might not be able to see it. The other thing is keep your jigging action a little bit slower and lower to the bottom. Now here's an interesting one and pay attention because this is something that I covered in the hook set video. Now this fish will come all the way to shore. In fact, I would drag it onto the beach without it ever getting the hook. Now imagine the jaw pressure on a real trophy fluke. See that? See that? Not even hooked. Not even hooked. Okay, I get asked this question a lot. How do you rig the gulp jerk shad? And basically, I follow the curve of the bait. These baits are not going to come perfect in the package, which is sort of a crime for how much they cost. So I measure out where the hook is going to go through. And what I want is, if there is a bend in the bait, I want the bend going downwards. So this bait is bending right side up. So I'm going to rig it right side up. If it was sort of bent the other way, I would rig it upside down. Now, before you push it up onto the bar, make sure everything is straight. The hook point on the 6-inch jerk shad and the GAMI 3 odd jig head comes out roughly at the first E in Berkeley, printed on the back. So I had to take a quick phone call, and I came back to this. And this is right after the tie change. This is the first of the incoming, and this is bad. You want it? Okay, so the decision to give this fish away was a fateful one because if I hadn't made that decision, I would never place the fish down next to my rod holder. And look what he does.
Okay, so he spray sand up into the Stella, and now I have to take a second break. But I'll take this opportunity to show you a couple of things. One is how I spray down the reel, and also just a sneak peek at my new rinse kit which was sent to me by the company and I will be doing a full review later on in the season. The first thing you do when you rinse down your spinning gear is you want to make sure your drag is completely tight. And then you also hold it horizontally, right? You don't want water to flood in from the backside of the reel. Now, here's the main thing. Once you rinse everything thoroughly, and I, I was using the mist setting on the rinse kit. You want to shake everything out. You want to shake it dry. Here's a little trick. I put a plastic bag in front of me so I can hear the water droplets hit the plastic bag. And I know when I get most of the water out. You also want to make sure you get a good tight grip on the reel so you don't shake anything loose internally. Now, while that's drying, I want to show you my new rod stand. So the one on the right is the one that I've gotten more questions on than any other topic in all my videos over the years. And it's sort of on its last legs. So I wanted to review a rod stand that viewers can actually buy. So here's the only drawback to this new one, which it won't fit my telescopic landing net. Other than that, it is feather light compared to the PVC rod stand. It's basically a modified tripod. Um, as you can see here, it's gonna fold down to a tiny little package. In terms of durability, who knows? I've had it out for a few outings and so far it's holding up well, but that doesn't really mean anything. The PVC rod holder was with me for over 15 years before it showed the first signs of UV damage and cracking and stuff like that. So I will certainly report back. I will leave a link to where you can buy this down below. It is from AliExpress. Um, the last I checked, it was under $40 shipped. Now, if I remember correctly, the PVC rod holder cost me over $150 back in 2001 or 2002. So this is quite a steal. If it lasts me two or three seasons, I'd be more than happy with it. So when you go to that link, make sure you click on the model 530. There's, I believe, a 300 and a 530. 530 is the one you want. The 300 series is tiny. That's meant for trout rods and Snoopy rods and stuff like that. So get the 530 and let me know how it works out, any of you who do actually end up getting one. And now my reel is dry and I'm putting everything back together just to see if I got rid of all the salt and sand and all the nasty things that got kicked up into the reel. I normally don't do any of this spraying until I get home. It's just a more controlled environment. I usually will run a light stream from the tap. So nothing heavy, nothing with a lot of pressure. And again, holding the reel horizontally flat, maybe slightly tilted upwards um, with the drag locked down. I will rinse the whole reel, especially the bail mechanism and the line roller right so after you do that you get everything dry once the reel is thoroughly dry i will use tsi 321 oil and hit the line roller bell mechanism the handle knob bearing and you're pretty much good to go that's pretty much all i do to the reel throughout the season and since it is a Stella, I will be sending it out at the end of each season to Shimano for service. And hopefully they get it back to me in good time since I do pretty much fish year round. Okay, so that's done. I'm going to hit a last spot before I head home. And here, this is like pulling fish out of the Ganges River. I mean, the water quality that day 
most of the time I wouldn't even bother fishing. Not because you can't catch any fish, obviously here I caught a limit plus, but it's just not very enjoyable for me to fish or even stand in water that's completely muddied up. And most of this is just an algae bloom plus some pollen floating in the water. Still, I'd rather fish in good water clarity. It just puts me in a better state of mind. I have never regretted my landing net more. I actually left it in the car because at this spot, I usually just drag the fish up the ramp. But I apologize for what you're about to see because this is pretty bad. There's so many people here all the time. I just, yeah, how you doing? And I get in. Oh, I know exactly how you feel. I just go in. Okay, so despite the water clarity, not a bad day. Three fish over 20 inches and four keepers. Oh, you don't keep it? Nah. Not out of that water, buddy. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I hope that was helpful. Between wind, water clarity, rain, whatever it might be, you can catch fluke in any kind of conditions. It just takes a little bit of adjustment. All right, thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you on the next one.